Continuing right from where he left off last week, Lily had seemingly taken a fatal blow from the Mute Kai, which, yeah, come on, you didn't believe for a second she'd actually die, right? Granted, I didn't expect her to survive in the most badass way possible. <laughs> Jeez, was the Joker a magical girl this whole time? You know who I'm talking about! Yeah, I think we can safely say this is a shot that would make Utena Hiragi wet, and not just because of the broken water pipes. I mean really, it just boils down everything that makes magical girls great into one moment of pure badassery, with a slightly cute touch, I mean her dress is still nice, in spite of all the dirt, you get the idea. Anyway, it did calm down the crowd, which also gave their reinforcements a good opening to arrive. And sure enough, it was Mei Tsuchiba from AST, who of course got right to work with her wand, which was a bunch of computer rams glued together. Yeah, the obvious symbolism here, as even the freaking title of this episode exposed it, was the fact that AST prioritized results over appealing in any sort of aesthetic way. So, obviously, they didn't bother with any frivolous coverings for their equipment, though should you at least not leave your computer innards completely exposed like that? Just saying, buying a bunch of air dusters isn't all that cost efficient. That aside, I actually kind of loved how robotic Mei's fighting style was. She never panicked, and while she of course tried to dodge every attack she could, she also knew when to rely on a barrier rather than running and only hoping that she doesn't get hit by a bigger attack. It kind of proved the point that she was trying to make about focusing on results over aesthetics, with her already making progress in defeating the Kai that both Kana and Lily together couldn't. And she did all of this in a way that was like her designing and presenting a freaking PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> This is the power of Control C V. However, back with those other two, Kana had become the representation of why magical girls in this world need good aesthetics, or rather PR, in order to connect with people like this stupid crowd who are just watching rather than evacuating like they should be. Like I get that they would be worried about the outcome of this fight, thus Kana had to sell them on Mei's ability by doing what she does best by repeating Miyakodo and EST's mission statements. <laughs> Eh, if you really want to get your message across, you should talk more like the Micro Machine Man. Each one has dramatic details, terrific trim, precision paint jobs, plus incredible Micro Machine pocket place that says a police station, fire station, restaurant, service station. Anyway, after helping with the evacuations, Khan circled back to see if she could help Mei, who claimed she did need it as she was being bombarded with a bunch of ice attacks. And I guess she had some sort of defense buff up that prevented her from taking a fatal blow, but still, she wants to get a lot of damage. Not that she cared, as in her own words, self-defense wasn't a priority. Yeah, since dialogue is really on the nose, but it was also meant to emphasize how little Mei was concerned about her own well-being, and more about her company's future and their image. Thus, it did make this brief moment of emotion out of her when Khan defended her all the more poignant. It's a look of confusion, and yet also maybe even a little doubt over AST's supposed perfect logic and efficiency. We kind of saw it previously when she showed a little admiration for Maki Lumiere, and especially here when one of their workers just went full pre-cure on her. <laughs> Proof positive that Minatsu was always just a shown protagonist in a tropical dress. And yet, in spite of all of this, Mei still tried to disregard Kana's efforts, and to her credit, she did almost immediately deal with the Kai with an efficient spell that she had been casting during all of this. Afterwards, she then went through a bit of a diatribe of why focusing on results was so important, though she didn't really say it angrily, and just with her usual robotic tone. <laughs> You say that, and yet Amazon still can't ship my orders on a timely basis. And yeah, this is probably my second favorite part of the episode, the first was Lily's Joker smile, as it did effectively exhibit this show's whole theme of aesthetics versus results, or rather, emotions versus efficiency. Like, just objectively speaking, yes, Mei was indeed the MVP of this battle, being pretty much the only one to deal any lasting damage to the Kai, and even ultimately defeating it. Moreover, she was indeed fulfilling their clients' demands by giving them exactly what they promised, and anything beside that would be... 
自己満足です God damn it, I want to say something, but that was just a really good line. I mean, no matter how much a hero can claim to be or be seen as selfless, there is always going to be a little bit of ego involved in their actions. It's just human nature that you can't really get around, and yet AST at least tried to mitigate this by creating workers like Mei, which to their credit has led them to becoming the top of the industry. And yet, trying to deny those aspects and little imperfections wasn't exactly efficient either. Lily showed a good example of this by explaining her botched morning routine that day that we'd also see a little bit more of in just a minute. Anyway, the point of her story was that she was nowhere near as perfect or as efficient as she tried to portray herself as, and yet she tried to maintain that appearance if only to give others a goal to aspire to and better themselves as a result. Otherwise, with the inevitable constraints of everyday life, while well, people can and will become apathetic to everything around them, not unlike Mei, who, yeah, would probably be better off just being replaced with AI at this point. Which, yeah, I'm legit predicting that's going to be an actual plot point in this show, considering they already have anime Jeff Bezos in it. But yeah, just a really great scene in general, kind of showing the two extremes of the business world. Lily did indeed manage to inspire others with her company's aesthetics, but despite their best efforts, she and Kana were never going to be able to defeat the Kai. Meanwhile, Mei managed to get the job done in almost no time, but like that feeling whenever you buy an Apple product, it gets the job done, and yet it also lacks that little bit of humanity. Both do bring up valid points, and just for a general survival in this sort of situation, both are kind of needed. Anyway, Kana wrapped up her internship with Miyakudo, though as she was leaving, their bosses were having their own discussions, in particular about the Kai mutations like we saw in these episodes. They hinted at possibly needing to further cooperate with AST, or rather Koga, in future jobs if things really start to go south, ending the episode on a rather ominous note. An after credit scene revealed Lily's morning routine, which was basically a slightly more feminine version of Sugimoto's morning, or at least what she wished her morning was like. Yeah, as it turned out, she was not only the type to needlessly binge watch some Netflix, but she also got on X afterwards to read everyone's impressions. Though I will give her credit for somehow being flexible enough to read her phone from this position. Honestly, that just makes her even more S-tier waifu material. But yeah, this is just a really good conclusion to this little arc of the series. Kind of goes without saying, but Lily really was the star here, and yet, in spite of only appearing in the last episode, May also left quite the impression. Between the two of them, they really provided a good argument for what makes a magical girl, and really, just your average 9 to 5 -er. If you haven't noticed, I tend to like stories where there is no clear-cut good or evil. I mean, yeah, the Kai are just outright chaotic evil monsters, but to say AST are outright wrong in their approach in dealing with said monsters, well, that's a bit of a stretch. Yes, they certainly lack a humanity and even seem to encourage their workers to disregard their own health, <clears throat> but again, they did get the job done and you do get the sense that they did indeed earn their position at the top somehow. And yet, as Lily and Kana prove, dressing up a little has its benefits too, mostly in how it opens up communications with others. With it, they manage to evacuate the civilians easier and will likely inspire other magical girls into this business that, with all the Kai mutations, likely needs more bodies. But yeah, while they couldn't defeat the abnormally strong Kai, Lily still proved that she had the drive and guts to fight, and hell, even came off way more badass than Mei. Seriously, put aside all the philosophical stuff, this episode also just had some plain kick-ass moments throughout. And overall, this was just a really good episode and conclusion to this arc with equal amounts of thoughtful and awesome moments. Lily might need to hold back on the Netflix, but if she can pull off wearing the same clothes twice in a row, well, she's doing something right, I guess. Thank you for watching, and as always, maybe if you want, check out some of our other videos on this here channel. As always, we'll try to keep up with everything going on, at least with the stuff I'm interested in between Magical Girls and Tokusatsu. The former in particular does seem to have some good prospects in 2025 that's not just solely Precure. Look forward to whatever comes next. Until then though, for now my friends, and- Micro Machines. Dramatically detailed, stupendously styled, smaller than enough, this one or this one. And now with a totally terrific town. Uh, sir, you ever just think of switching to decaf?